Okay, well, let's get started. So, um, good news is we're not going to do a whole lot of extra stuff today. You're going to basically do what you, you did last time, which is find true links and plug views again. You'll be doing that over and over again for a few weeks here. Um, let me give you a little bit of why, why you're finding the point view. Um, eventually, we're going to talk about a situation where I've got two pipes that cross over each other. And maybe I want to put another pipe, see if I've got room for another pipe to go in between them. And the only way to figure out how much space is between the pipe is in a view or one of the pipes is in a point view. So we'll get there eventually if that doesn't make sense, but I just want you to know you're not just finding the point view just for the heck of it. There is a reason that, that we want to find the point view, and it's, it's eventually so that we can measure the distance between multiple items. So uh, in addition to the point view, thing real quick. So in addition to the true length and the point view, we are going to add one more thing today, and that is the bearing. So the bearing is just simply north, south, east, or west, or some angle that varies from north or south. So if I'm walking this way, I'm walking north, right? If I'm going up a hill, still going north, right? If I'm going down a hill, still going north. So we're only looking at just the bearing, north, south, east, or west today. Next class period, we'll talk about slopes. Uh, but today we're only talking about north, south, east, or west. So if we are going to talk about the bearing, where we're going north, south, east, or west, uh, we got to figure out which view that is going to be in. So switch back over here and remind you that we have our box. And the horizontal plane, the top, represents the flat top of our desk. This is the view that we're going to use to figure out north, south, east, or west. So no matter what the other views look like, if they're sloped, any of that, we don't care. When you're asked for the bearing, you want to figure out north, south, east, or west, you look at the horizontal plane, period, every time. Whereas the true length, it could be in any sort of view, right? It could be in frontal, horizontal profile, an auxiliary view. The bearing, you're always going to get from the horizontal. And the bearing comes from the letters of the line. So we go alphabetical. So A to B, I guess on, on your guys' direction, it's kind of going south. But uh, So we go from A to B to figure out north, south, east, or west. So the top of our screen is north. So this would be going to the east, right? But then if I flip the same line around and had A here and B here, then we're going west. So that's all we're going to be doing is figuring out north, south, east, or west. Then um, if we have something that's not lining up with north, south, east, or west, and we've got to put in an angle, then we're going to do the acute angle from either north or south. So for example, let's say that here's point A, it's going to point B. And this is a 45 degree angle. So you're always going to start with north or south. As I go from A to B, it's going up towards north, right? It's not going down towards south. So I'm going to start with north. And then the angle away from north, so this angle right here, which would also be 45 degrees. And then it's going to the east, so it's north 45 to the east. So had I changed these labels around and this was A and this was B, then basically wherever your start point is, we just pretend that the origin is there, now I'm going south 45 to the west. So it's just contingent on the letters which order it's going in. So again, that's all laid out here in the slide, and those are up on Learning Zone as well. Again, I want to stress, only in the horizontal projection, and then we're measuring from north to south and going alphabetically. So kind of like what I just drew out for you. Here's a line 30 degrees away from north. So can somebody tell me what the bearing of this line would be? North 30, north 30 to the east? Good. So again, start at C, going north 30 to the east. Can somebody else tell me what this bearing would be? 
North 72 West. Good. Now, I've already obviously put the origin at the first letter, but obviously when you guys are doing this, you'll just want to make sure you take a look at the letters and make sure that you're going in order. One more. Somebody tell me this one. Good. South 14 degrees to the east. Perfect. That's all you're going to do today, in addition to what we did last time. You're still going to find true lengths and point views, but we're going to add bearing to it today. And one more example, south 51 degrees to the west. Sounds like you guys are getting it. We'll talk about angles and slopes next class period. So uh, before I get you into today's exercises, I want to go through a sample one that has many different examples so that we could talk about what the bearings are. So if you would like to do this along with me, if you'll go to new and then our templates folder and then the additional files folder that I created, in there you will find one called bearing angle practice. And then I'd encourage you to save this back to your uh, folder. Yes. Okay, it's popping up because you're opening instead of doing new. If you do new uh, from a template, it just makes a copy automatically. I gotcha. Because we can't save the, the network drive. Gotcha. Yeah, as long as you do new. Which is okay. It's okay if you do it that way and do a save as. It's not a big deal. But, okay. but yeah, if you do new, it'll take that template and start it right up. And then if you look at the title bar, it's just drawing to or whatever. So then you just got to save it to your folder. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. Save it to my folder as bearing angle practice. Now today we're just going to talk about the bearings. We're going to save this and then on Friday we're going to come back into it and do all the uh, slope angles as well. So again the big thing I want to stress over and over again we're only looking at horizontal when we're doing bearing. So as we take a look at the first one here I've got uh, line AB and I want to figure out its bearing. We know we go to the horizontal plane, so we'll start up here. And what I typically do is just with the line command, I'll start a line at the first point, in this case A, and either draw up to the north or down to the south, whichever gives me the acute angle. So obviously going down to the south gives me that. So I'll just create a quick little line there and escape out of that. And then to calculate the angle, I'm going to use the angular dimension tool. Whoops, let me get rid of my magnifier here. The angular dimension tool, which is hidden underneath this linear dimension right here. You can choose angular in the drop down list. And for this one, you just pick the two lines and then click to place its angle. So I've got a 70 degree angle there. And typically, as a rule in this class, uh, whatever units I give you, use those units in your answer. Um, so if I give you two decimal places, put it in two decimal places. Now if it is rounded off perfectly at zero, zero, you don't necessarily have to put the decimal places in. But if you do get something like, you know, 70.01, don't just round to 70, give me the decimals. So I've got 70 degrees here, so that's gonna be south, 70 degrees to the east or west. East, since we're going this way. So south 70 degrees to the east. So down here in the bearing, you can just double click on these X's to get into the text editor and then just delete the text and or backspace. So we said south and please do capital letters and then 70. And then let me show you how to do the degree sign. There's two different ways. Um, up here in the toolbar is the symbol button. If you click that, you should see the degrees symbol there. Also notice there's a shortcut percent percent D. You can type that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose degrees and I now have my degree sign here. But again, let me just show you if I'm typing, I can actually type percent percent D and it also gives me the degree sign which doesn't sound like that great of a shortcut, but I, I feel like I can do that a heck of a lot faster than I can go up and hit the symbols button, personally. Now that's a holdover from old school AutoCAD before we even had a Windows environment. That's how we've always done that symbol, so. 
So south 70 degrees to the east, right? And then we can click away from that one. All right, so let's take a look at the next one here. We've got line CD. Can somebody tell me what the bearing of this one is? East. So it's just east. So one of the problems I see in this class is, hey, here's an angled line. I better draw a line and measure the angle. But this is the front plane, right? We only care about the horizontal plane. So C to D is going east. That's the answer. So the third example is actually the same example, but flip the letters. Again, just pay attention to what letters are. So what's my bearing on this one? West. Good. Line EF here, what would be the bearing of this one? East again, good. Line GH here. South, good. Not too difficult, right? I'll be honest with you, the difficulty comes when next time we start doing slopes and then remembering the difference between the slope and the bearing and making sure you're getting it in the right spot. But that's why I take it in two separate days. And we'll just do the bearing today. Here's my line. It's a perfectly vertical line. So does it go north, south, east, or west at all? Undefined. Yep, undefined or no bearing. Either one would be acceptable. Any yeah, any would be all right. Yeah, I'm all right with that. So no bearing on a vertical line. So where should we start our line? Up here on the OH, going down, and use our angular dimension. So here's a perfect example, 43.88 degrees, don't just round that to 44, give me the full number that you have there. So, so Dami, what do you got for the bearing? Thank you. South 43.88 percent percent B east. Nice job. So again, I'd encourage you to save this one. You can use them on exams, pull them up and refresh your memory on what you did to get it all done. If you have any specific questions, you didn't quite get something there, then once we get started on the drawings, let me know and I'll come over and address them. Today we're just going to do two drawings. So I gave you four the other day and you guys worked hard. Today we're just going to do two and they are, as you probably guessed, lines five and six. So let me show them to you guys real quick before you get started. So lines five. Once more, you are to determine and label the true length and point view for each of these. So all three situations give me the true length and the point view. And then tell me what the bearing is. So down here at the bottom, I created a little AutoCAD table. All you have to do is double click in the cell and then type your answer. So just tell me what the bearing is for each line. So by the way, make sure you uh, pay attention to which one's which. I know on that last exercise that I handed back when you were classifying lines, um, some of you switched them around because maybe it went A, B to C, D to E, F or something like that and it wasn't the order that you expected. So just make sure you're lining those up properly. So that's lines five. Line six is pretty much the same thing but just different lines.
So once more, find the true length and the point views of these. And then give me the bearing. I think you might have done planes, maybe? So lines five and six, and then that'll be it for today. So let me know as you guys run into any questions.